There are countless first lessons for all instruments online. We even kind of have one of our own in our video companion to our How to Hold the Sticks and Beginning Sticking Patterns worksheet. The truth of the matter is that we don't do a lot of direct lesson plans because when Musician's Notepad was started, we looked out at the internet and saw a lot of people teaching, but no one was really talking about teaching. And that's what we wanted to do. To meet our goal, our lessons have to be more conceptual. More a suggestion on how to structure one's approach to a certain kind of lesson or topic. Today is no different. Today, instead of talking about a student's first lesson, we talk about a student's last lesson. Students have lots of reasons for stopping lessons, as well as different timelines in regards to how they let you know that. Sometimes you have a student that's a senior in high school, and in the fall they let you know that they're going to be ending their lessons in May. Other times, a kid walks out the door with an assignment for next week, and the schedule at the front desk lets you know that the student just had taken their last lesson. Sometimes you see it coming from a mile away, and sometimes it just happens. The way you deal with it is all on how you prepare for a last lesson. To do so, let's talk a little educational theory. I think the most mind-blowing idea that I picked up in college was that of backward design. Start with the end in mind. After hearing this, it instantly became one of the cornerstones of my educational philosophy. It's so simple and elegant that it also blows my mind that when I heard it, it wasn't a full-time faculty member talking about it, but a grad student teaching a class I was taking. Think about it this way. When you want to learn something on your own, you have a goal, right? Maybe you're unsure of how to achieve it at first, but eventually you create a set of steps to get there and criteria to check that you've achieved it. Well, there is no end to being a musician, there are goals to be set by both the student and teacher. A student's goals tend to be to either gain an ability or a position. They want to be able to play a certain song, or they want to be able to play really fast, or they want to make snare line and marching band. The overarching goal that I set for myself with all of my students is for them to be a self-sustained musician. Self-aware enough to know what they can do, what they want to do, and how to bridge the gap in between the two. My ultimate goal is to make myself obsolete. However, we're not talking about my last lesson. We're talking about the student's last lesson. And I approach it the same way whether I have six months left or six minutes left. I simply ask the student, what do you want to know that we haven't covered yet? What this question does is it cuts through everything we're doing and says, we've got this much time. What do you want to do with it? If we have months to go, the student and I usually have a discussion and set out on a schedule of what to do with our remaining time. When it's weeks, there's a little time for development, but there's definitely the pressure of the ticking clock to achieve all we want. When I find out that day, well, I drop my lesson plan, ask the question, and hope for the best. When the lesson is done, I always let the student know that they're welcome to come back, to stop by anytime they want, and to contact me with any questions they might have. For adult students or students that are graduating high school, maybe not exactly 18 yet, but are going to be very soon, I'll give out my personal information, personal phone number, just so that they don't have to call up the studio I might be working at and they can ask any little questions they have directly. If they've been taking lessons for a long time, I go out of my way to find an appropriate gift, which usually ends up being a book with a sappy message written in the front. Dear baby, welcome to Dumpville. Population, you. It's important to never make a student feel bad or guilty about the fact that they're leaving lessons. Always be positive about them moving on in their life. Be encouraging. For however long, you've been an influence on the way this person understands music, which for most people means you've had an influence on their identity. So, do you have any last lesson methods or traditions that you'd like to share with us? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. And make sure to come by next Wednesday for our long-awaited Soundbrenner Pulse Review follow-up. It's finally here, so you're going to want to check that out. Okay, that should do it. Let's hit it.